right, now we're going to work with the law of tangents. Um, this specific law of tangents is for triangles um, when you are given two sides and the included angle. And yes, you can also use the law of cosines. Okay, so this works for two sides and an included angle. So yes, I do know that we could also solve this using the law of cosines, but be a little adventurous. Try, try out the law of tangents and see how See how you like it. I'm going to do two examples and show you um, what it looks like. Okay, so first notice there are three different forms of the equation for the law of tangents, and that just depends on your given um, va values. Um, in this example down here, I'm given A and C, sides A and C, and angle B. Okay, so I would use the one that has A and C in it. Okay, so we would start by setting it up, putting in the values that we have. So C minus A, those are my side lengths. Notice they're lowercase letters. So C is 10 minus A, which is 4, over C plus A, so 10 plus 4, equals the tangent of 1 half of angle C minus angle A. Now we don't know angle C or angle A, so we just have to write angle C minus angle A over the tangent of 1 half of C plus A. Now, again, we don't know C or A, so um, we just have to leave that as C plus A for now. Now, that would be really difficult to solve, not knowing any of the angles on this side. So what we're going to do is a little bit of substitution. Okay, what do we know about the angles? We know angle B is 84 degrees. Okay, so we know that all the angles in a triangle should have a sum of 180. Okay, so A plus B plus C should be 180. And we do know that angle B is 84. So we can put that in. We were given that amount. Well, let's move that 84 to the other side so that we just have our A and C since that's what we're dealing with anyways. So over here I get A plus C is 96 degrees. I don't know what A is individually yet, and I don't know what C is individually yet, but I know together they're 96. Okay? Notice that's one of the values I did not know in my formula here was what A plus C was. So now that I do know what A plus C is, I can replace this A plus C with 96. Okay, and that helps me so that I'm able to do a bit more solving here rather than just being stuck right there. Okay, right now I don't have a C minus A. That's actually what we're going to solve for. So we're going to reserve this over here because we'll need it again later. And we're going to put 96 in for our A plus C plus A. Now notice it's one half of that, so I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 2, and that gives me 48. So on the left-hand side, let's simplify a little. I have 10 minus 4 is 6, and 10 plus 4 is 14. That's equal to the tangent of 1 half of C minus A, which I still don't know, over the tangent of, remember we had that 96 replaced our C plus A here, times a half gave us 48, so the tangent of 48 on the bottom here. Right? Now our job right now is to solve for that C minus A. So I'm going to clear this, some of my notes out so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so our goal is to get this, this C minus A by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that tangent 48. And to do that, it was divided by tangent 48. So if I multiply both sides by tangent 48, that will do it. So I have 6 over 14, or 6 divided by 14 times the tangent of 48 is equal to the tangent of 1 half of C minus A. Okay. All right. Well, we can go ahead and calculate this left-hand side over here. Just be really careful. Um, rounding, again, gets us further and further from the answer. So um, if you can just leave that number in your calculator to continue calculating with it, that's the best. I'm going to write down the intermediate number here. Um, so 6 divided by 14 times the tangent of 48 gave me 
0.76792. And again, the, the closer you can leave that to the original, the better. Okay, so again, what's our goal? We're trying to get that C minus A by itself. Okay, right now, the next thing that has to come off of here is this tangent. How do we remove a tangent, or what's the opposite of a tangent? The arc tangent, or inverse tangent. So what I'm going to do is take the inverse tangent of both sides of the equation. So that removes the tangent there. And over here, I would do the inverse tangent. Now, I still have that full number in my calculator, so I'm just going to use it from there rather than rounding. So I'm going to do the inverse tangent of my number over there. And I get 25.4533 about is equal to 1 half of C minus A. Okay, so the tangent's gone. We still have that one half of C minus A. We're trying to get to just C minus A. So how do you get rid of a one half? You multiply by two. So we multiply both sides by two. Again, I still have that whole number in my calculator. So I'm doing two times the number. And I'm left with C minus A is equal to about 50.9. And now I can round. I'm pretty close to the end. Well, I didn't solve for C or for A, but I do know what C minus A is. And from here what happens is we do um, an algebra problem with our um, elimination is what we called it. Because remember over here we knew that A plus C was 96, and now we know that C minus A is 50.9. So I can bring that over here. I'm going to line up, um, rather than writing it as C minus A, I'm going to write it as negative A plus C equals 50.9 because that is the same thing. Okay, so negative A plus C equals 50.9. And if you remember back in algebra, we could do elimination where we add the two equations together. The A and the negative A would cancel. C plus C gives me two C's here. And then I add the 96 and the 50.9. That gives me 146.9, and then to finish here, I divide both sides by 2. Okay, so for angle C, I get 73.45 degrees. Woo! I have one of my answers. <laughs> now I need to find the other two. To find angle A, we're going to use this fact right here, that A plus B plus C in a triangle equals 180 for the angles. So A plus 84 was my B plus 73.45 equals 180. You could also use the fact that just A plus C equals 96 if you want. Okay. So now I have A plus 73, excuse me, 156. <laughs> okay, so that gives us just A plus 157.45 equals 180 and we subtract that 157.45 from both sides and we get about 22.55 for our angle A. Okay, so, so far we've found two of the missing parts found angle A is 22.55 and angle C is 73.45 and now we need to solve for side length B. We'll use the law of sines for that. Okay, so remember the law of sines say that we do if we do B over the sine of B that will be equal to and we can use either A or C here. Either one will work. I'm going to use C um, over the sine of C. Put in my values. I don't know what the length of side B is. Over the sine of angle B is 84. <clears throat> C had a length of 10, and the angle C was 73.45. Hey, we want to solve for B. All we would have to do there is get rid of that sine 84. And to do that, let me change colors real fast. To do that, I would just have to multiply by the sine of 84 to get that out there. And do the same on this side. So I get B is going to be 10 times the sine of 84 divided by 
the sine of 73.45. So I just take out my calculator and do that. And for B, I get it's 10.375. I'm just going to round that to the nearest tenth. So it's about 10.4. Okay, so we used the law of tangents and we were able to solve for that um, missing parts and pieces. So it is a bit different. I'm going to do one more example. Um, so here we go. We're again, we are given two sides and the angle included between them. So it's not opposite one of my sides. And yes, there are other laws we could use to solve this, but we're going to practice with the law of tangents and give it a chance. Right, this time we were given A and B. So I'm going to use the formula that had oops, A and B in it. This one here. So we put in our values. So A was 15 minus B, which was 10 over, it says, add them on the bottom, 15 plus 10 equals the tangent of one half of angle A minus angle B. And notice we don't know either of those. So I'm just going to put A minus B here over the tangent of one half of A plus B. Again, I don't know angle A and angle B, so I just put that for now. Then we use our sinking caps, and we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C, if I add those all together, I should get 180, because there's 180 degrees in a triangle. Angle C is 40 degrees, so I know that A plus B plus 40 is 180. And if I subtract that 40, I know that A and B together, A plus B, should be 140 degrees total. Now, the good thing about that is now I know that A plus B is 140, so I can replace this with 140. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we're going to simplify this a little bit. Okay, so on the top, 15 minus 10 is 5. 15 plus 20, 10 gives me 25 equals the tangent of 1 half A minus B over, and this would be the tangent of um, 1 half times 40 gives me, or excuse me, 1 half times 140 gives me 70. So on the bottom, I have the tangent of 70 degrees. We want to get this A minus B by itself so that we can, we want to isolate that. The first thing I need to remove is this tangent 40. So if I multiply tangent, sorry, excuse me, tangent 70, multiply by tangent 70, it will remove it from the denominator there. And whatever I do on one side, the rule is I have to do it on the other. Okay, so now I have <clears throat> 5 over 25 times the tangent of 70 is equal to the tangent of one half of a minus b. I'm going to go ahead and simplify or calculate this over here. Again, leave that number in your calculator after you're done so you get as close as possible to the exact answer. So 5 over 25 times the tangent of 70 gives me approximately 0.549495483 goes on from there. That's equal to the tangent of 1 half of A minus B. Okay. We next need to remove that tangent, so we're going to do the arc tangent or inverse tangent. It just depends on who you're talking to and what word they choose to use for that. Because that's the opposite of or the inverse of doing the tangent, and it will remove the tangent there. I'm going to calculate this, the ta inverse tangent of my number that I had previously calculated gives me about 28.7885 equals 1 half, because our tangent was removed, A minus B. Again, we're trying to get A minus B by itself. Right now we have 1 half. How do we get rid of 1 half? Well, if you multiply by 2 on this side, we'd have to do the same on the other side, multiply by 2. I get about 57.6 equals A minus B. Okay, so I haven't solved for A or for B yet, 
but I do know that A minus B is 57.6. So I can bring it over here to this other side and I can use a system of equations. So I know A minus B is equal to 57.6 and I can place it right there. We're going to use elimination here. We're going to add straight down A plus A is 2A. B plus negative B is 0B, so those would cancel. I go ahead and add these together. 140 plus 57.6 is 197.6. We want to finish now, so we want to solve for A. It's 2 times A. If I divide both sides by 2, I get that A is 98.8. Okay, I found one of the values that I needed. Okay, to find the next value, you can put that 98.8 in right here for your A and solve for B, or you can go back to the fact that the three angles in a triangle have to add to be 180. Okay, put in the values I know, so I know A is 98.8. I know C is 40, because that was part of my given information. Combine my like terms. 40 plus 98.8 is 138.8 and subtract that from both sides. Okay. And that will bring me down to just one more thing to solve for. Okay. I get that B is 41.2. Put that into my information down here. Okay, all I have left to solve for is the length of side C. Again, I'm going to use the law of sines to do that. So I know I'm looking for C, so I'll use C over sine C. And I can use either of the other two. I'll go ahead and use A over sine A. Let's put in our information. I don't know C. I do know that angle C is 40. So I have C over the sine of 40 equals A is 15 over the sine of 98.8. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the sine of 40 so that we can solve for C. So now all I need is my calculator, 15 times the sine of 40 divided by the sine of 98.8. Put that in your calculator and you shall have your answer as long as you calculate carefully. You should get about 9.8 for your answer. Okay, so that's what I'm going to put in here, 9.8. So I found the three missing values and I used the law of tangents like they suggested.